be in the book of Psalms this morning. Psalm 121. <clears throat> Psalm 121. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. Praise God. I'm going to have us all stand while I read the Word of God. See, I don't do it all the time because I don't want to make it tradition. But honestly, we should be giving honor to the Word of God. Right? And that's why we stand when we read the Word of God. And I'm going to read the Word of God now. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. From whence shall my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber or sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord your sh is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep you, keep your soul. The Lord will guard your going out and you're coming in from this time forth forever. Amen. You can all be seated. You know, that, that, that's a pretty powerful psalm right there. How many of us ever feel like we got, we're doing battle? This is one of the psalms I like to stand on right here. When I, when I feel like I'm facing a trial a major trial in my life, or whatever it might be, in prayer, this is one of those psalms as a good reminder, you know, to get us back in the world of faith, trusting God, right? This is a powerful, this is a powerful psalm right here. Now, I don't know, but I, I was thinking about I was thinking about some of the hikes that I've been on. I showed you guys some pictures before about some hikes that I took and different things, Pauline and I. And, and uh, you know when you look, you know when it says, I look to the hills. I look to the mountains. The mountains aren't going to give us help. That's not what it means. See, we're looking at our trial and our, you know, a mountain. When I'm on the, the bottom of the mountain before I go for a hike, I look at that hill or that mountain or whatever it might be, and I can be overwhelmed to even want to begin my journey. You know? Isn't it true? You know, Jesus tells us to speak to that mountain, and it shall be moved. Right? But you know, that mountain has a lot of challenges in our life. There's a lot of challenges with those mountains. And we have to lift up our eyes towards our problem. You know? You know, and sometimes, sometimes, you know, I really like that because I lift up my eyes to the mountains. And sometimes, you know, we're so discouraged we don't lift up our eyes. You know, discouragement can keep our heads down, right? You know what I mean? And, and I really like that because it says, 
I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord. That's where it comes from, not the mountain. You know, the mountain is not a problem for God. Is it? You know, and there's a lot of places in the Bible where it talks about lifting up our eyes or lifting up our heads or lifting up our hands. You know, and there's a reason why we're told to do that. You know why? Because discouragement can make our heads down, right? We can be discouraged and have our hands hanging down and, you know, whoa, woe is me, right? But we've got to look up. You know, we're told to lift up our eyes. You know, don't look at our problem, but look up. You know, look up. Look up to that problem. Look up to that mountain, right? Lift up your eyes. Don't let your problem discourage you. You know, you, you need to lift up your eyes at that problem because your help, that word help, it means aid. Your help comes from the Lord. You know, lift up your eyes. You know, and I was thinking about that, that word lift up for a minute before I keep going. You know, that word lift up, there's a lot of places, like I said, a lot of places in the Bible. There was only over 70 places in the Bible were told to lift up. Isn't that amazing? Now I'm going to share a few of them. You know, Abraham, when he was... Uh, after Lot and him separated because of strife and Lot took Sodom and Gomorrah, you know what God told Abraham? You know, they just had conflict with each other. That's what happened, you know? You know, when we have conflict with, especially someone you love, you know, like Abraham and Lot, I mean, they were related. And they weren't getting along. And Abraham gave him the best of the land. You know, Lot took, he took Sodom and Gomorrah. And at that time, it was a really plush place. But look what God told Abraham after Lot left. It says this, Genesis 13, 14 says this. The Lord said to Abraham, after Lot separated from him, now lift up your eyes. See, don't look at your problem. Lift up your eyes and look at the place that you are and northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land you see, I will give it to you and your descendants forever. See, don't look at your problem. Lift up your eyes. And you know what? Look at the blessings that I'm about ready to give you, right? You know, when we look at our problems, we're not looking at our blessings, are we? Right? And there are a lot of blessings. We live in the land of the living, and we need to look at the goodness of God in the land of the, in the, land of the living. Because there's a lot of blessings out there. And sometimes we got to get our eyes off ourselves and our problems. And we got to look at God, right? Don't we? You know, it, uh, Psalm 24, it tells us two places to lift up our heads. Psalm 24, 7, it says, lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. You know? You know, we need to lift up our heads. You know, we don't need to walk around downtrodden. Do we? Lift up our heads. You know, we got to tell ourselves sometimes. We're going to lift our heads up. 
You know, we're going to strengthen our arms, you know? Right? You know, when we praise the Lord, we, lay, we raise our hands and praise the Lord. Isn't that like surrender to God in a way? Isn't it? I'm surrendering and I'm going to lift up my hands to you. They might want to hang down right now, but Lord, I'm going to lift up my hands unto you. I surrender and I give up and I praise you, God. I praise you, Lord. Lift up your heads, lift up your hands. We're called to do that. But we're called to do that not when things are always good. We got to do that when we're going through a trial. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's easy to have our heads lifted up when things are good or our hands lifted up or, or whatever, our eyes. Whatever part of our being, it's easy for that to happen, isn't it? You know, I, I want to look at a couple other verses. Psalm 119, 48 says, I shall lift up my hands to your commandments. Wow. You know, sometimes we struggle with the Word of God, you know? Especially if the Word of God is telling us, us to do something contrary to what our flesh wants to do. You know what I mean? Isn't that true? Sometimes our flesh gets in the way, or we can, you know, maybe somebody said something to us, or whatever it might be, and then we want to, like, stew in it. You know what I'm saying? But the Bible says, I'm going to lift up my hands to the Word of God. And the Word of God tells us not to stew in it, but to love our neighbor. You know, to love our enemy, right? To love those who falsely accuse us. You know what I mean? we got to lift up our hands to the Word of God because the Word of God tells us to do that, don't it? And the rest of that verse says, the word of God, which I love. <laughs> you know, sometimes the word of God for me is a love-hate relationship. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'd like to rip out some of those scriptures when my flesh wants to get in the way. You know what I mean? But the word of God keeps me where I need to be. And I need to surrender to the word of God. I lift up my hands to the word of God. Because I love it. I love it. You know, we were talking about tithing a while ago. And when we first got saved, the book of Malachi talks about that. You know, give your t whole tithe to the storehouse. And the promise is, you know, he will, he will rebuke the devourer of your soul. You know, that's the blessing that goes with it. But I remember at one time when we first read that part in the Word of God, I wanted to rip that page out of the Bible. I wasn't loving it. But you know what? The Word of God. we got to surrender to what God wants. You know what I mean? We do. And you know what? I love that scripture now. And I see the benefits in it. I really do. That's a sermon for another day. But you know, over here also, you know, like, there is a place, you know, in Psalm, where is it? Where did I put it? I want to look at it. Oh, Psalm 123, verses 1 and 2. See, we're looking at Psalm 121 right now, but Psalm 123, th this place, it says, I'm, I am going to lift up my eyes, not to the mountains, but to the one that's enthroned in heaven. So, again, all right, I'm going to lift up my eyes to the one enthroned in heaven. That's what it says in Psalm 123. Hallelujah, and that's what we got to do. 
don't we? Verse 2, right in the middle of it, it says, So our eyes look to the Lord. <laughs> See, we've got to look on the Lord, don't we? We can't look at our problems. Because our problems can really make us downtrodden. You know what I mean? Downcast, discouraged. We've got to look at the Lord. And we've got to make ourselves sometimes look up. You know what I mean? We gotta look up. We do. Hallelujah. Psalm 143. Also, you know, I want to look at that one. Verse 8. Lord, I mean, let me hear your loving kindness in the morning. Hallelujah. That's the best time to do that, you know, when we're fresh, before the world comes in our life, you know what I mean? The cares of the world, the heat of the day, right? In the morning when we're fresh, right? We got to look at the loving kindness of God. For I trust in you. Teach me the way I should walk. Hey, <laughs> teach me how I should walk today. I trust you. I'm looking for your loving kindness and your blessings, and I want to look for that. What a way to start the day, you know? And that should be our attitude every day, looking for the blessings of God. Then it says, for to you I lift up. See? Not my head. Not my eyes, not my hands, but my soul. I'm going to lift up my soul, Lord. What is our soul? Our mind, our will, our emotions, our attitudes, right? Sometimes we need to lift those things up because those things aren't in alignment with God. You know what I mean? And what a good way to do that in the morning, isn't it? To lift up our eyes, to lift up our soul, to see if our soul is in alignment with the Lord, you know? God doesn't want us to have stinking thinking, does he? He, he doesn't even want our emotions to be all stirred up. He wants us to walk in the peace of the Lord, don't he? Don't he? What a prayer that is. And sometimes we have to tell our soul, you know, I'm not going to be angry today. I'm not going to be fearful today. I'm going to trust the Lord. I might not have slept last night, but it's not an excuse for me to take it out on everybody today. You know what I mean? I'm going to lift up my soul today to the Lord. You know, and, and you know, it's amazing how many times it says that. Now, you know, in Luke chapter 18, there's somebody, there's somebody that was a tax collector. And, and uh, I want to read this, Luke 18, 13. The tax collector standing some distance away was even unwilling to lift his eyes up to heaven, but was beating his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. You know? You know, sometimes we can be downcast because maybe we failed somebody or we failed God, you know? And, and we're feeling like the devil has beaten us down, you know, letting us know that we're a failure and that there's no hope for us. You know what I mean? And, you know, when we get to a place, we gotta, we got to lift up our eyes to the cross. You know? Don't we? If the Son of Man be lifted up, he will draw all men unto him. Right? And, and that's what we got to do. We, we can't stay defeated. We can't stay that way. we got to get back up sometimes. You know what I mean? We're all going to fail each other. And, and you know what? 
we are saints washed by the blood, but there are times, okay, we can slip in sin. And, but we can't stay in that place, you know what I mean? We got to lift up, right? We can't say, oh boy, you know, got to ask God. We got to ask God for forgiveness. Be merciful to me, God. Help me. How many times should I forgive? Seventy times seven, right? And God forgives us like that, too. And you know what? We got to understand that the Lord, okay? The Lord, all he wants to hear from us is, help me, God. We can't let discouragement stop us from getting close to God. You know what I mean? Or sin get in the way. You know what I mean? There's forgiveness for all. To those that repent. And ask God to help them. You know? You know Luke chapter 21. Here's a place too. It talks about Luke 21. Uh, verse 25. I'm going to start right there. And I'm going to read right down to verse 28. And it says, there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and earth dismay among nations in perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves, men fainting from fear and expectation of things that are coming on the world. But the powers of heaven will be shaken. They shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. But when these things begin to take place, straighten up and lift up your heads. Straighten up and lift up your heads because redemption is drawing near. And you know, we're hearing all this bad news, aren't we? And we all know, you know, we see, we see the times that we're living in and they're perilous times, aren't there? But, you know, even through that, that can make us downtrodden and our faith can waver, you know, and we can be overwhelmed with all the wickedness that we see in this world. But, you know, Jesus knew that. And he says, you know, all of that is going to make you feel downtrodden and discouraged. But you know what it tells you to do? It says straight, straighten up and lift up your heads. Because your redemption is coming near. You know, the devil wants us to think that God don't care. But he does. The devil wants us to think, you know, that God is on vacation and he's not going to honor all the promises he says in this word, right? But he will. You know, the enemy wants us to feel that way. But we've got to lift up our eyes, right? We got to straighten up and we got to lift up our heads because we got to get our eyes back on God because we know He keeps His word. And everything here is going to happen just the way He said it's going to happen. And we can't lose heart. You know, Jesus said, When I return, will I find faith on the earth? Will I find faith? May He find faith in us. You know what I mean? So we can't let the world beat us down. We've got to trust the Lord, right? Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, and there's one more place I want to look at would lift up your eyes. You know, there's a place in John chapter 4, the woman at the well. You know, he just told her everything about her, that she had five husbands, and all these things, right? She had an encounter with Jesus, and she recognized that he was the Son of God because of the things he said to her. It touched her heart. She had an encounter, and she believed that Jesus was the Son of God. The woman at the well. To a point, she went and got all her friends to come listen to Jesus. You know? Praise the Lord, right? But the disciples went. They came back. They were looking for food and stuff. 
And look what Jesus said. And he's saying that to us right now. Okay? Verse 31. 431. Meanwhile, while the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So that the disciples were saying to one another, No one brought him anything to eat, did he? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and who accomplish his work. Do not say, yet four months, and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields. They are white, ripe for harvest. You know, and, and you know what? Sometimes we can have our eyes not only hanging down, but, you know, we could get so caught up in life that we're not paying attention to those that need Jesus. And, and Jesus told us to get, to get our eyes off ourselves in, in our personal lives and, and the things that we'll, we get caught up in, you know? The things that we get caught up in and we neglect the harvest field. Because you know what? There are a lot of people that need Jesus. There's a lot of people, and he told us, you know what? I want you to get your eyes, look up, and look around. You know, there's people. The harvest field is ripe. And I'm looking for some workers that want to show the love of Jesus to them. You know what I mean? You know, I mean, we gave out ice creams yesterday, you know, at the campground. It was a blessing in a way, you know. It really was. I mean, I, I didn't have a chance to, you know, literally give them the gospel. But we gave them the gospel by showing some love. And there was some really hard-hearted people there. We went to almost every campsite in that place with our ice cream truck. You know, some people had beer on their tables or whatever they were doing, you know. Some people couldn't even look at the Journey for Jesus sign on the van. And they were convicted, you know. But you know what? We showed the love of God. And the Lord was showing me. There are a lot of hurting people out there that need the Lord. That's why they're drinking. They're trying to medicate themselves. But they need the Lord. They need me. You go out there. Show them your love. And you know what? As you do, I'm going to give you opportunity to share about me. And there was a couple times. A couple of people asked questions. I didn't get very theological with them. But you know, a simple thing is an ice cream. You know, soften up a heart a little bit. But the harvest field is ripe, and the workers are few. And we got to lift up our eyes, don't we? But I want to get back to Psalm 121. You know, Psalm 121, it's really amazing to me that in this case, God is telling us, I need to lift up my eyes to the problem. Yeah? To that mountain. Wow. I don't know, I don't know about you, but I like to be an ostrich sometimes. When there's a mountain in my way. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to put my head in the ground, hope it all goes away. Yeah? Yeah? You know, you remember that story, Rip Van Winkle? How many years did he sleep? What was that guy's name? He slept for years, then he woke up. I don't know. Whatever, just trust me. It's a story. But you know what? The guy woke up many, many years later, but sometimes some people, they just want to go to bed and not deal with anything. 
They want to be an ostrich. They want to put their heads in the ground. You know what I mean? I don't want to deal with anything. I'm going to close the windows. I'm going to close the blinds. I don't want to deal with anything. All right? But here is telling us, lift up your eyes and look at your mountain. You know? Look at your mountain because your help comes from the Lord. The Lord is going to give you aid. He's going to help you. Don't look at your problem. Don't look at how many miles or how steep the journey is going to be up that mountain. God is your help. And what kind of God is he, you know? Like, verses 1 and 2, if you look at this, when it talks about I, right? The word I, and then my help, then my help, right? Those are all personal pronouns. You know that? That means we need, we need to make that decision, right? Where does my help come from? Right? My help comes from the Lord. Me and my. I will. See, we got to tell ourselves that, don't we? And we got to remind ourselves that our help is from the Lord. It's from the Lord. And you know, those mountains problems and challenges that we have in life. And there's all kinds of them, aren't there? Yeah. I know there's a lot of times I want to run the opposite way as my problem. You know what I mean? But I find when I confront my mountain, God is with me, and he's going to help me, and I'm going to overcome that mountain that I'm facing. I know it. Why? Because God has the power to do that. You know, he has the power to do that. Because if you look at verse 2, what's it say? Who made heaven and earth. You know, he made the sun, the moon, the stars, the universe, all those things out there, right? But you know what? That word heaven doesn't only mean the created things out there, but it means that he's a God of angel armies. He created them, too. He created angels. You know, he cre his throne actually lives. It's not a tangible thing. His throne will move everywhere he wants to move. There's cherubim on that throne, and they have eyes all around them. You know, God is pretty powerful, right? He's the God of heaven and earth. And you know, the earth, I'll just tell you one little quick story about that. We were kayaking on vacation, and we were going down, how many miles did we do that day, remember? Ten miles on the river, and we were out in the middle of nowhere. It was just all nature. It was nice. I enjoyed that kayak ride. And while we were going down there, there was a place and there was all these really cool blue flies flying around. And I was trying to take pictures of them in my kayak. I was worried about dropping it in the water and stuff, you know? But, you know, I was trying to take pictures of them, but they were so fast that I couldn't do it without hitting a tree or something, okay? So, so I missed that blessing. And the next thing you know, I saw a couple of blackbirds down the road and they were eating these blue flies you know and those flies were there to feed those birds <laughs> you know and I was just thinking about how awesome God really is and how he takes care of all of us that those I was enjoying the beauty of those flies but those birds that they were that was their morning snack and they were enjoying it too. But see, God loves us all and he takes care of us all. And I was so blessed by that moment with the Lord, you know, that I got full of God's love, you know. He made the heaven and the earth. And if he made all of that, 
Can't he help us? Absolutely he can help us. You know, verse 3, it tells us he won't let your foot slip. I know somebody that, I know somebody when we were kids, she went hiking and she fell off the face of the mountain and she died. Right down a cliff. It was muddy. She slipped, went down. And you know what? There's a promise here. You know, sometimes we don't want to climb that mountain because we're afraid that we're going to slip along the way. But it doesn't matter. God is going to make sure we don't slip. You know, we don't slip. He's going to take care of us. He's got our back. You know what I mean? And if we do slip, he's going to pick us back up. You know? The enemy wants to make us slip, don't he? He wants us to stagger and be shaken and fall. But God said we're not going to slip when we decide we're going to go up that mountain. We got the Lord's help, don't we? Who can, you know, who can stand against us when we got the Lord fighting our battles? You know what I mean? Who can stand against us? Now I want to show you something else. On this psalm, if you look, and I'm going to show you, okay, he won't let your foot slip. He who keeps you. See that word, keeps? Okay, well, that word comes in six different ways in this psalm. It's the same Hebrew word. And the Hebrew word is shamar, okay? That's what it is, shamar. The word keep is in verse 5, I mean verse 3. If you look at verse 4, he who keeps, see that word keep? Verse 5, the Lord is your keeper, okay? And then if you keep going, verse 7, it says the Lord will protect. That's the same word. Even though it says protect instead of keep, it's the same Hebrew word. And then... <clears throat> It also says in verse 8, the Lord will guard. That's the same Hebrew word, shamar. And that word means, I'll tell you what it means. It means to hedge about with thorns. Isn't that nice to know that we have thorns around us that keep us safe? I don't know. I, I don't like, I don't like touching thorny things. How about you? But God says that there's thorns around us and nothing is going to harm us. You know what I mean? Those thorns are to protect us. He preserves us. He protects us. You know? He guards us. That's what it all means. He keeps us. Anybody do any preservatives? Do you, anybody do canning? He preserves us. What, what, what does preservation do? So we don't spoil, right? He's going to keep us. You know, we're going to be preserved. We're going to be guarded. We're going to be protected. He's going to keep us. He keeps an eye on us. That's what he does. That's the Lord we serve, right? It doesn't matter what mountain we're climbing. And it doesn't matter what devil we're going to face. We got the Lord preserving us. You know what I mean? He's even going to tell us what to say if we don't know what to say sometimes. And there are times I, I, I didn't deal with certain issue, situations in my life because I was afraid to. But when I stepped out and I walked through that mountain, the Lord gave me the words I needed to say. And I was in amazement on how he kept me and preserved me. And he even helped me not slip in that situation. You know? But we got to trust the Lord. Don't we? We got to trust him. He doesn't sleep. And I preached on that last week. About Jesus sleeping in the boat. Remember that? He wasn't sleeping. He wasn't sleeping. 
He doesn't sleep. He's always on the job. Isn't that awesome? His eyes are always on us. He wants us to look up to him, but he's also looking at us. Okay? He's looking at us. He's watching us. He is. You know, he keeps us. That's nice to know. The Lord is with me. Right? The Lord is with me. Hallelujah. Isn't that nice to know? I think it's good to know that God's with us all the time. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Whether he sends us out in the sunset in a beautiful situation or whether we get sent in a place that, oh boy, you know what I mean? Do you ever get sent in a place that's like, oh boy, this is pretty bad. This is wicked. This is, I, I don't even want to go in that situation right now, Lord. But the, the promise is that God is going to be with us when we go through those things. We're not alone. You know, that, that's pretty powerful right there. The Lord is with us. You know, and, and verse 5 is that promise. The Lord is your keeper. Again, that word keeper. The Lord is your shade. And, and see, the first two verses, it's all personal. I and me and my. But the rest of it, it's you, your, and this. And really what's happening is the person that recognizes that the Lord is my help is encouraging other people. Okay? I have the victory, and I'm going to encourage you that he's going to keep you. He's going to guide you. He's going to do that. So all the pronouns are in the, the, the other sense. It's the other person, okay? And really, that's what we got to do with each other, right? we got to encourage each other in the faith, don't we? We do. Yeah, you, your, your, you, 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 your, your, right? Isn't that what I'm doing to you right now? I'm encouraging you in the Lord. Right? I'm encouraging you in the Lord. But verse 5 says, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right side. See that? So that means he's with us. He's our shade. I don't know. The older I get, the more I like shade in the summer. I remember when I was a kid, you know, a teenager out on the beach, whatever, okay? Uh, the more sun, the better, okay? And I used to see all these old people like me, okay? They had a shirt on, they had their socks on, and they were under a tree. And I'm thinking, boy, I hope I never get to be that old person that's under the tree. But you know what? I got to learn that the shade is a really good place to be. And you know what? I love my socks on all the time. And I actually got some pretty special socks today. <laughs> These are Bengal ti tigers. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, somebody I love gave me a birthday gift, surprise socks every month. That was my birthday gift. I look forward to the sock fairy showing up at my house every month. And I got these yesterday. Isn't it cool? Praise the Lord, right? <laughs> Not bad for an old man. Now you imagine me in a shade, okay, with my socks on. And those young people, maybe they'll think I'm cool. I don't know. Do you think it's cool? Yeah? Some of you think an old guy shouldn't wear socks like that? But I love the shade. I really do. It's nice and cool. And the Lord said, I'm going to be your shade. And I'm by your side. When you're going up the mountain, I'm going to be your shade. I love the shade. I do. He that dwelleth in the shelter of the Most High shall rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Right? 
I love the shade, and I love to be under the wings of my heavenly father. You know what I mean? And nobody would dare to touch my daddy, right? And I got thorns around me, and nobody's going to touch me unless the Lord allows it. Praise the Lord. Isn't that awesome? I wonder if I could take my socks to heaven with me. I used to be a white sock only guy. I really was. I was very conservative. I don't know what happened to me, but I love fun socks now. I love fun socks. The bolder, the better. <laughs> I really love them. They put joy on my heart. They really do. But anyway, back to this. Enough about me. Let's talk about God. You know, he keeps us, don't he? And he keeps all of us, too. You know, where it says he keeps Israel, but he also keeps me. So he keeps me, but he keeps all of us, too. So we don't need to worry. The Lord's going to keep us. Doesn't matter what the, the battles are out there. Doesn't matter what the problems are out there. The Lord is going to keep us when we have our eyes on him. He will. Praise God, right? He's always with us. In the sun, the heat of the sun, and even, what's it say here? It says, the sun will not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The heat of the day are challenges, fiery trials, right? None of that. None of that. God is going to keep us and preserve us. He will. Even when the moon is out. You know, and I think about that, when the moon's out. I don't know, I remember one time we were hiking and it was getting dark out. And... It didn't look like we were going to get out of the woods. And, and I don't know, panic was starting to want to come in our hearts, you know? I, I, I knew we, like we were about a half an hour in the woods. I had a little bit left battery power of a light on my phone. That's, I wasn't prepared, you know? And Pauline's phone was dead. Remember that? You couldn't even walk anymore. And, and at that point, you know, when darkness comes, sometimes that can happen, you know? And when I think about the moon, that's how it is. But you know, the Lord, he's not going to let anything happen to us. And he's always around us, always, always, always. Verse 7, he's going to protect us from all evil. That word... Sh Here's that Shamar word again. He's going to protect us from all evil. All evil. He's going to keep your soul. You know, your mind, will, and your emotions. He's going to keep it. He's going to preserve it. He's not going to let our soul overwhelm us to discouragement, right? The Lord's going to take care of us. And not just in our trial. But from, you know, if you look at verse 8, he says, you know, he's going to guard your going out and your coming in. And that's our everyday activity. Whatever we go through, whatever our day is going to bring us, he's going to be with us in our going and our coming. He's always with us. It doesn't matter where we are. The Lord is with us. And you know what? And it ain't going to be that one time we climb the mountain. It's going to be how, how often? From this time forth and forever. I will never leave you or forsake you, the Lord said. Right? And, and you know what? Our comings and goings, we're never alone. Now, we can claim that as Christians, but people in the world can't claim that. I don't know how people in the world do it without Jesus, to be honest with you. I'm glad I have Jesus in my life. How about you? 
and he's going to protect us. So I just want to encourage you with this psalm today. And, you know, don't leave here. You know, don't leave here discouraged. Look at your mountain. Because you got help from the Lord. You know what I mean? You got to speak to that mountain by faith, right? Speak to that mountain. You know why? Because the Lord that created that mountain can move that mountain for you. And we can trust the Lord. You know what I mean? Psalm 121 is a very powerful psalm. And I'm going to say a prayer right now. I pray, I hope you were all encouraged today. And I hope I blessed you with my socks. And I'm going to say a prayer. Father, I want to thank you for today. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for Psalm 121. And Lord, we will look to the mountain because we know our help comes from you, O oh God. Help us not to ever be discouraged, downtrodden, and help us to lift up our eyes and look at you. And God, I know you will take care of our problems. You will help us through our problems. And God, I'm asking you, Father, that your grace, your loving kindness, will be bestowed upon us day by day. And God, fill us with your love and your joy and your peace. And God, help us to have our eyes lifted up so that we could see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And we know the battle is yours, God. All you want us to do is to put our faith and trust in you, O oh God. And Lord, I pray that you bless each and every person here. And as we leave here, let us be the light that you want us to be to those around us, O oh God. And bless your people, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you.